Gian Hatsias is here on set. Talk about the number, which surprised even you, given it's how we were able to walk past the strike. Uh, yes, it was a very strong report. Um, the current month was significantly stronger than expected, and there was a large upward revision. So if you look at the drops numbers now, you're really not seeing that much of a slowdown. It's a little bit uh, surprising because other indicators do show a slowdown over the, the last year, but the log job market's just chugging along for now. One big take this morning was that Rosengren and George were right, that the dissenters who said we don't need to cut again. Yeah, or you could say that uh, the message from Chair Powell on Wednesday was right, which was basically we're done here and we've done the adjustment. And there are different views on whether the adjustment was necessary. Rosengren and George uh, obviously think it wasn't. But uh, I think it underscores that the cuts are over. We saw a labor force participation rate tick up. It looks like companies are having a harder time finding new workers. The pool of available labor fell to the lowest level since December 2000. What's that telling us right now? I think it's very consistent with what you're seeing in the establishment survey jobs numbers, that labor demand continues to be strong. And I think the long-term trend in, in labor force participation is probably slightly down still because of uh, demographics, aging of the population. But against that, you've got this very strong labor demand, which is pulling more people into the workforce, uh, which is obviously a good thing. And, it, and it's a signal that, uh, yeah, job, job market's very robust. You've written in the last couple of weeks that scarcity, labor scarcity, is not a big deal right now in terms of subtracting numbers from non-farm. Is that true? Yeah. So I think there is, are some signs of labor scarcity, um, nothing, nothing major, but you know, to some degree you are seeing it in the wage numbers. Today's number was obviously weaker, but the trend has been towards stronger wage growth. Uh, but yeah, I think workers can, can or companies can still find workers where, where they need them, but they do have to pay up more than they have in previous years. One of the big bear theses right now is that, all right, Companies are not laying off workers, but they're doing everything they can do short of that. Give them fewer work hours, uh, be less aggressive on wages and benefits. And that once, I don't know, people say once the year clears, then we'll see this new wave of layoffs. Do you expect that? I don't really see that, no. I mean, again, the, the wage numbers are picking up, uh, you know, gradually. And I don't think you should put too much weight on the sort of month-to-month -month numbers. The trend is higher. Uh, and I think as far as ours are concerned, I also don't see a, a, a meaningful downward trend there. So clearly growth has come down somewhat. We're closer to trend. You know, GDP over the last year has grown 2 percent. That's probably only uh, in the neighborhood of trend, maybe a little above. So, you know, you should see some adjustments in things like ours, but I don't think it's anything dramatic. These guys were having a discussion last hour about Boeing and the impact of 737 MAX uh, groundings on the numbers. Um, how much noise do you think that is adding to the manufacturing picture right now? And is there any reason to think that that's going to change or subside or have a bigger I, effect? I think it has weighed on GDP growth to, to some degree by, you know, a few tenths of a, of a percentage point cumulatively in, in Q2 and Q3. Um, you're seeing, you're not seeing a major effect in the in the jobs numbers, though. Uh, if you look at manufacturing X motor vehicles, it was, uh, you know, was up. Uh, uh, you know, X the bo X the uh, GM strike was up about 10,000. So, uh, you know, I think it's it's a it, it's not a major factor, but it has subtracted a little bit from the numbers. Uh, then we got ISM, uh, pretty decent, I guess you could say. Is that cycle bottoming as well? It looks like it. Uh, if you look at the manufacturing uh, indicators, they, you know, clearly weakened. The surveys weakened sort of in the spring and into the summer. And you saw that not just in the U.S., but globally. But now I think we're seeing some signs of stabilization, even a little bit of improvement in Asia. Uh, the Chinese numbers have picked up somewhat. And I think we're, we're starting to see that in the, in the U.S. data also. Uh, Kudlow's comments on trade have been constructive today. Clarida says the cuts that we've gotten will start to kick in in Q4. Can we start to expect more aggressive retail sales numbers again? Well, we've had very strong retail sales numbers up until the last report. Um, so I think the last report was probably a little bit of payback for some of the previous, uh, you know, very, very substantial strength. So I wouldn't necessarily expect a, a big pickup there. That said, I think the picture is solid enough. So continued consumer spending growth in the sort of two and a half, two and three quarter percent range in, in real terms. I think that's a that's a reasonable expectation.
Um, what's the most interesting question to you then right now regarding the economy? I think we've put the, uh, the, the, the cuts behind us at this point. Um, the most interesting question is, I think, still what is the risk of a, of a downturn? We've taken the view that uh, the risk of recession in 2020 uh, is still relatively low. Um, if you look at uh, market economists and ask their average probability of recession, most recent number is 35 uh, percent, that, that's the consensus, we would be below that. Um, we recently rolled out a, uh, a new model of recession risk that uh, uh, put us in the, in the sort of low to mid-20s. Low to mid-20s. And uh, that's not too far um, from, from the sort of unconditional probability, the typical uh, probability that the, the economy is really, in, in I, recession. I've seen some others that argue the uh, the yield curve takes it down to low teens. Would you go, could we go that far? Well, the yield curve is still quite flat, and that's been the driver, and the, the earlier inversion of the yield curve has been the driver of some of these higher recession risk estimates. But I think it's important to put the yield curve into context, because the yield curve is affected by some structural changes in the fixed income markets, in particular the much more compressed term premium at the long end of the curve, which I think distorts some of these calculations somewhat.